Well, folks, a uh, few weeks ago, I made a video titled, Nobody Wants EVs. And in the comments, I had a lot of people, and some people even reached out to me and told me how much they love their EV and how much they disagree with me, and said that their EV is the best car they ever had, and they would never go back to internal combustion. So um, it got me thinking, um, I did a little research and you know, I got a bunch of slides prepared here for you guys today. So we're gonna go to it and I'm gonna show you guys um, my opinions on EVs. Um, and before, for many of you people who um, are just tuning in for the first time, my name is Ali from Shahani Motors. I've been in the auto industry since 2007. I have done every job from a uh, lot boy to a lube tech to a uh, technician to master technician to a service manager to a sales manager to finance everything in between. I have worked at franchise dealers. I have worked at um, you know I have worked at new car stores. I have worked at franchise auto repair. Um, ch chains. I have worked at mom and pop shops and for the last nine years I have owned my own used car dealership and auto repair shop. So I have quite a bit of experience in this field and I'm going to give my uh, non-biased opinion on what I believe and what I think uh, is the future for EVs and what is the current situation. So let's just jump right into this one guys. Um, all I ask in return is that you guys, if you haven't already, uh, hit that subscribe button and give us a like. It helps the page out takes a lot of time for us to prepare these videos and all the slides. So, uh, first we're starting with this Gallup poll. Um, says that Gallup poll finds that U.S. public demand for EVs is declining. Now you guys can pause and um, read the whole article if you'd like, but I just want to focus on this. Overall, however, 44% of Americans in the U.S. say that they are seriously, either seriously considering or might consider buying an EV in the future. This is down 55 from 55% 55 in 2023. Meanwhile, the amount of people who say they are not considering an EV has increased from 41% to 48%. So roughly 50% of Americans say that they're not even considering an EV at this point. Now that's significant and I'm going to tell you uh, why uh, a little bit later on in the video. Now what I'm trying to think, I can't think of, I honestly cannot think of one time. Now mostly on a daily basis people ask me about um, crossovers, SUVs. Uh, pickup trucks there's a lot of demand for them and people are constantly asking about them i can honestly not say one time i can't think of one time that anybody has asked me um if we had evs or if we're planning on getting evs or if we can get them ev no one has ever asked me that so um yeah the demand is not there for and you know again we, we're not a high-end dealership we 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 sell economic vehicles average person just trying to get by um this is the kind of you know we we, we just have nice cheap uh economic vehicles that we sell and no one's asking for evs you know um so all right so let's let's look at this next here from cnbc ev euphoria is dead automakers are scaling back or delaying their electric vehicle plans automakers from ford motor vehicles GM Motors to Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Aston Martin are scaling back or delaying their electric vehicle plans. Though customer, uh, through customer demand for EVs hasn't shown up in the um, in the way the executives had expected, sales of the vehicles are still predicted to increase in the coming years. A broad return to a more mixed offering of vehicles with a lineup of gas-powered vehicles alongside hybrids and full electric options, assuming all electric future at a much slower pace. It calls attention to um, vicious EV targets set for years ahead. So, again, a lot of the main manufacturers are pulling back on their on their plans for EVs, um, and you know we, we've talked about that before, where just the demand is not there. And I've talked to um, many people at new car franchise stores; and they're telling me the demand is just not there for the EVs. The EVs just sit there and sit there and sit there, and nobody wants them. And even when they sell them, the dealers don't want to service them because they have a lot of issues, they have a lot of problems, and frankly, they might have one technician in the whole dealership that was sent out for training on EVs. And even then, I mean, even the technicians, they don't want to deal with these cars, you know? Um, so let, we're gonna, next we're gonna talk about these EVs that um, people are buying are dropping value like a rock. 
Now, this is a report from Mannheim. Mannheim is the biggest auction house in the U.S. So when when people when dealerships get trade-ins, uh, most of them will just bring their car the trade-ins uh, directly to Mannheim, which is an auction house, and then you know smaller dealers and wholesalers like ourselves will buy the cars from the deal from the auction over there. So this shows uh, price change for select market classes year over year, and this is from June 2024, so last month's report. Now look at EVs. EVs are down 16.6% year over year. Don't, you know, let's not let's not get it twisted. Prices, wholesale prices have definitely come down. But, you know, this one obviously sticks out at 16.6% down. That's significant. Now, this is from the same report, seasonally adjusted electric vehicles Values for June 2024 are down 16.6% compared to June 2023, while non-EVs are down 9.5% in the same period compared to May. Seasonally adjusted EVs um, values continue to decline more than the market overall, falling by 6.5% in June, while non-EVs decline only 0.3% in the same period. So you can see that the the wholesale prices are dropping like a rock. And I mean, this this is you know evident to anyone that's in the you know is 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 a dealer. You know, the older EVs, nobody wants to touch those with a 10-foot pole. No dealer wants to buy a, a EV that's out of warranty and that you know they're going to sell to their customer and that it can give them a problem because you know the problems with those cars are not like a internal combustion engine if they have a problem it is catastrophic failure if a battery goes bad that that's the car is total there's nothing that they can do with those cars anymore if an engine goes bad in a car we could still put an engine we could put a transmission in the car but when a when a battery goes bad on a, on an ev car is total no one's fixing that and this is why you see uh, GM, um, the auto manufacturer announces $854 million investment in four factories to build a new generation of V8 internal combustion engine for their full size pickup trucks and SUVs. So this is talking about uh, GM is investing almost $1 billion in a brand new platform V8, new family V8 that for their for their, all their trucks and their, um, you know, their bigger SUVs. So I mean, why would these manufacturers, when you know, look, we're 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 about eleven years out from the twenty thirty five, um, you know, uh, goal that they have to be hundred percent EVs for new cars sold by twenty thirty five. Uh, why would GM be, you know, investing almost a billion dollars in creating, you know, in, in developing a new V eight engine? Hmm, that doesn't sound right. Or it could just be that, look, they know that the demand is not there. And um, so that they, they're just doing what works. You know, at the end of the day, they're for profit organizations. They're not going to do stuff that's not profitable. On average, aside from Tesla, they lose $35,000 per unit EVs that they sell. Per each EV they sell, they're losing $35,000 because their volume's not there. Now, Tesla sells at a higher volume, and that's all that they do. So Tesla is the only manufacturer that is able to profit, and they, they have good pretty good profit margins on most of their vehicles because they've done so much volume on them that you know they've become uh, profitable in them but aside from that on average the each each unit that they're selling this is across the board they're losing thirty five thousand dollars per unit so they're not going to keep on doing uh things that's not working and especially when the demand is not there now if the demand is there that's one thing you know they can go ahead and keep on pushing forward and eventually become profitable but if the demand's not there they're going to do what works and guys <laughs> you know it's laughable to think that you know uh, like a guy named you know john jack they, they, you know they, he's a plumber he's a carpenter you know he has a construction company he needs a truck he, he's gonna go out and buy a cyber truck I mean, it's, it's just laughable man like come on man no one's doing that no, there, nobody wants an ev that's you know they're gonna go out they're gonna buy a dodge they're going to go buy a, you know, they're going to buy a Ford F F250. They're going to buy, you know, a 2500 Silverado HD. Um, they're going to buy a GMC. They're, nobody is going to go out and buy, you know, nobody wants those trucks, realistically. And, and I'm going to be honest, what you have to understand about America is that America is not like China. Now, China, I believe it's like 68% of their market now at this point is EVs they don't have the culture that we have over here we have a very much 
cars are very personal to us. Trucks are very personal to us. I mean, motorcycles are very personal to us. It, it is, it's a culture, you know, like it's not just transportation. We don't look at cars like transportation. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an extension of your personality, the car that you drive, you know, and this is, this is very much an American thing. And I don't know if it's in other places. I, I'll give you, give you a funny example. My, my father, you know, I bought my first motorcycle and, um, <laughs> it was a nice motorcycle. My father literally pulled me to the side and, you know, you know, we come from, you know, Pakistani descent. So my father's originally from Pakistan, he, you know, he pulled me to the side and he says, son, are you having financial problems? I'm like, I'm like, what, what do you mean? What, what, what are you talking about? He's like, I, I see you have the bike. You bought a bike, you know, you, you, are you having financial problems? You see back home, back overseas, you know, in Asia, South Asia, they ride motorcycles out of necessity. <laughs> and we ride motorcycles here in America out of pleasure. You know, it's, 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 it's a joy. It's, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a culture thing here. So over there, it's out of necessity. You don't have money. That's why you buy a motorcycle so you can save on gas. So he was thinking that I don't have money and that's why I bought a motorcycle to save on gas. So guys, it, it's a completely different thing over here. And, um, you know, in China, yes, they're just, they're just getting by and they don't care. It's just A to B. That's how they look at transportation. Cars are transportation to them. So they don't really care. They don't have that attachment to their vehicles. Here, we very much do. So it, it's very difficult to say that you know you're gonna push an EV on on us when majority of people and I could tell you I could talk to a lot of uh, talk to a lot of people majority of people do not want EVs especially truck guys come on man they're not they, if you if you have a truck you know I love trucks I, I I'm a big GM guy I love my GM trucks man and you can't tell you can't tell me I'm gonna replace my 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 you know my GM truck with an EV you know what I'm saying there might be cool technology but yeah, that's 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 uh, that's not gonna happen. So it's not only GM. Now Toyota doubles down on hybrids with a fresh eight billion dollar in U.S. investment. The world's number one automaker is adding six hybrid assembly lines in North Carolina. Um, and started so the as their electric car takes it. Now Toyota's is is you know one of the biggest manufacturers in America. You know, and especially you know they make some of the best cars. They have one EV right now, and that EV is not even their EV fully. They made it in conjunction with Subaru. I mean, what a joke. It's, it's a joke of a car, honestly. It's, it's a joke of a little crossover SUV. And they see that the demand is not there. They were giving these cars away. Um, the, someone was telling me about the lease incentives they had on these cars were literally insane. I mean, it was like, it was like, it was so good that, you know, it was like, it was actually a great deal. I'm not going to, it was, a, it was actually a great deal because they couldn't sell these cars. So they had to give crazy lease incentives to get these cars sold. So as you can see, even Toyota is doubling down now. So this takes me to, to Tesla. Now, back in 2023, I, um, I, I sold my Hellcat Red Eye at that time. And, you know, I, I always try to keep one interesting car, um, you know, that I just drive around until it sells. And, you know, we do make some content and do some things with it. So when I sold that car, I said, you know what? The Model S, you know, especially the Model S Plaid. Now, it's always been a very interesting car for me. So I said, you know what? I'm, I, maybe we should, I, sh I should buy it. Now, at the time in 2023, the price for a uh, Plaid was $120,000 brand new. So I said, okay. Now, when I was doing my research on, um, I was watching that, so the new price was 120. Now I'm watching brand new ones with only a few hundred miles to a thousand miles. And I mean, they they were, you know, like 10, $20,000 less. So I said, okay, hold on a second. When I buy a car, I have to think about an exit plan on the car. So I said, you know, I can't, aff I can't afford to buy a car, even it is if it is for, you know, for our research and development purposes, I can't afford to buy a car and afford to depreciate so badly. So I said, let me hold off. Then Tesla kept having incentives and they kept having incentives and they kept dropping the price and they kept dropping the price. Now this is at the time I'm making this video, July, 2024, this is the price of the car. You see 80,009 is the price of the car. Um, the same exact Model S, this is a 2425 Model S Plaid which is the top of the line fastest production vehicle production vehicle ever made yes very impressive okay so as you can see forty thousand dollar price cut 
Now that's 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 significant. Now imagine if I would have bought this car in 2023 i would have bought it for 120,000. oh my god yeah it's a great car i'm liking it everything right now the next year the very next year i'm like hey let me sell this this car i enjoyed it for one year um i made my content and I, you know i i got to experience a test on it let me go ahead and sell this car well now <laughs> i can't even sell this car for forty thousand dollars less look at that just say that I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll sell it for eighty thousand. I'll take a, I'll take a forty thousand dollar hit. Well, guess what? Nobody wants to buy my eighty thousand dollar one year old Tesla with maybe a thousand miles on it. You know why? Because now a brand new Tesla is the exact same price. So I would have to sell my one year old Tesla for even less then 40 so it would be more than a forty thousand dollar loss on that car and this is this this is not only with the model s with the model y with the model um model 3 tesla keeps on cutting their own prices and what they're doing is they're screwing the customers who bought the cars the year before you know now you have a one two year old car with a bunch of miles on it and what it should have sold for you know what the value should have been now Tesla is selling the same exact car, brand new, for the same price. So now your car is virtually like 40-50% um, valued less. So this is a problem uh, with Tesla. You know they, they keep dropping price, and you know it's it's hurting it's hurting the wholesale. Now we're going to talk about Hertz then. So Hertz is done gambling with EVs. It took a first quarter 195 million dollar hit on Teslas that just keep losing value and they can't sell them fast enough so now hertz you know they're done playing games with tesla because hertz if anyone understands hertz's business model what hertz does is they'll buy brand new cars they'll put them out on rentals and within one two three years you know they'll they'll have 20 30 thousand miles and they'll go ahead and and they'll wholesale those cars they'll sell those cars and they'll buy a brand new car so they don't lose so much value and they can sell them for a good price and they've already made their money on the rentals in the meantime well that normally is true for a normal vehicle but because tesla kept on cutting their prices they undercut hurts so bad that they they're taking you can see here a 195 million dollar hit on just their teslas and not only that's coupled with all of the additional costs that they had to incur from when their teslas you know got into an accident or they had any issues with them they, the parts are are astronomically higher than a normal vehicle you know the cars are losing value and the new manufacturers they don't want to deal with that so look this is the price now you can look at uh, hertz's price year to date year to date their stock is 60 percent worth 60 percent less than it was in january 1st that's significant guys they were they were trying to do something with the evs you know they're like hey this is the future this is the new wave so they said let's let's go all in on evs and what did it do for them they're down they're, the, the the value of their stock is down 60 percent year to date year to date um, you know, and it's, it's not only Tesla's, you know, if you, if you look at it, I mean, let's look at the other manufacturers, you know, the other, the other, um, competitors, if you can call them. Now look, look at Tesla's, this is Tesla's, uh, this is, this is their market. Um, you know, the, the market share that Tesla has. Now you see this big blue ocean over here. This is Tesla, 78% market share Tesla has. Now domestics, excluding Tesla, because Tesla is also a U.S. car, um, have seven percent. Um, Koreans, so like Hyundai and Kias, have three percent. Volkswagen has two percent, and German three have two percent, and the others eight percent. So you can see, guys, that Tesla is the biggest player in the EV game, and it's not even close. But so let's look at Tesla's, you know, the other other competition that Tesla has. Um, let's look at let's look at so polestar automotive is a is, is smaller evs you don't see them around there they're actually kind of rare but um you can see here that they year to date are down 54.8 percent their stock is down um let's look at lucid lucid is down 46 percent year to date and this is after you know you know recently it had a pretty epic run you can see it right there but they're down 46 percent year to date um Let's look at Rivian. Rivian and Rivian has had an epic run. Almost, I believe it's like 70% in the last few months. But 
even despite that is down 28% year to date. Amazon is you know is partners with with Rivian with you know the, a lot of the delivery cars depends on your area. A lot of the you know Amazon delivery trucks are actually EVs and they're Rivian EVs. So because of that, you know, they have a they have a chance of plus um I believe they, they also just did a deal with um, Volkswagen as well. So Rivian, you know, may I believe Rivian will survive. But as far as as, as Polestar and Lucid there's there is I would say there is about a 75% chance that these companies will not make it the next three years there, there's a 75% chance that these these two will be bankrupt in the next three years how bad their sales are you know lucid is is an absolute dumpster fire um, if you if you if you see their earnings it's it's an absolute dumpster fire you know they they their earnings and you know they're, they're producing such let little amount of vehicles that they are so unprofitable that it's a good chance that they will go under within the next few years so guys what's the takeaway i believe i i do believe in teslas I, i'm not you know as 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 uh pessimistic as i am on evs if there's one that does survive i i, I truly believe e Tesla will be the leader, and and this is why, despite how you know um, bearish I am on 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 EVs, um, I'm heavily invested in Tesla stock. You know, uh, full disclaimer, I, I'm I'm heavily heavily invested. We have a big position in Tesla because I, I do believe that Tesla is you know a uh, it's, it's a good you know five ten fifteen year play. I, I do believe that. So, you know, you can see here that, you know, the most popular electric vehicles, you know, 50% of them on the road are, are Model 3s, Model S's, Model X's. You see these all over the place. You see Teslas are, are very, very common depending on your area. But the other manufacturers are, are not even in the same conversation. So I, I believe that Tesla does have, you know, um, Tesla positions themselves very, very well for the next 5 to 10 years. But guys, as far as EVs go... Again, we have a lot of work to do um, before EVs are mainstream. And if you talk to the, you just talk to your neighbor, talk to, nobody really wants EVs. You know, Main Street America, they, they are not, they are not looking for EVs. They don't, you know, they don't consider EVs. And, um, you know, make no mistake, we are in a, if we're not in an official recession, we are in a consumer recession at this time. Um, we might not be in one for the, you know, the, the technical definition of one. Just ask your neighbor. Just ask, you know, uh, ask the people at the grocery store, you know, if they're hurting. Everybody's hurting right now. Businesses are hurting right now. You know, revenues are down. Um, so make no mistake, we are in a consumer recession. And when we're in a consumer recession, nobody wants to play around with these, you know, these risky plays and that's exactly what evs are it's a risky play man it's a risky play if you buy a new one good for you you know get one under warranty you know enjoy it and you know see what happens you know see if you like it see what the experience is like to buy a used one uh, that's financial suicide and guys i'm gonna leave it right at that so guys if you got value out of this one guys make sure you guys like subscribe if you disagree with me if you agree with me make sure you put a comment down below and uh until next time guys peace